curtail curtail is to reduce in quantity means to refrain from doing that see what the irony is in order to preserve everyone's freedom we need to curtail everyone's freedom what is the boundary of a personal liberty that means everybody is free to do anything but it is only the personal liberty something that is not authentic something that is not original so that is called as banal or banality hello everyone i am dr shalini professor of english vidyashram first grade college the temple of excellence mysuru today we are here to understand one of the essays prescribed by university of mysuru for second sem bcom we are going to understand about on the rule of the road today what is there in today's session it is very interesting actually we are going to understand about the author first then we'll move on to the new words so if we learn the new words essay reading will be very easy so we are going to understand the new words first then there is a theme to understand today then we'll move on to the summary of the essay so why delay let us begin to learn about the author first so he is the author that is a g gardiner so he was a very famous author he has written lot of essays he is an american author he was actually a journalist also he worked as an editor too and he was an author too fine so he has written lot of essays he has written short stories his short stories and essays are actually very famous so one such essay is this on the rule of the road which has a very wonderful message for people he used to write in the pen name alpha of the plow so this was his pen name he always used to use it whenever he wanted to write some essays or novels so most of the essays is actually written in this pen name so he was also the chairman of anti sweating league so this sounds little different isn't it anti sweating league so what is it he was an advocate he actually advocated for the minimum wage industry so people were working as minimum wage workers there in uh, some industries and there he advocated that is he argued he campaigned for those for that minimum wages to those uh, uh, workers in that industry and he made sure they get their minimum wages so that is nothing but this anti sweating league that means they have to be paid for their sweat how much they how much effort they put no so for that it ha they have to be paid properly so that is what his uh, campaign was all about so that is nothing but this anti sweating league so he has contributed a lot to all the different uh, sections of the society so he is ag gardener his essays are, are wonderful they are sarcastic at the same time they are funny too they are not too very funny it's not very comical but they have a glimpse of that comical element that glimpse of humor is there in his essays so make sure you read uh, at least 5 to 6 essays so that you will get the essence of that humor what he uses in his essays so let us move on to the uh, new words that are there in this essay to begin with it is peril peril is nothing but danger so he uses it when he is talking about an old lady who is walking in the road so he is talking about the danger that she is posing to the road or the traffic there next we have this anarchy anarchy so these words i'll not tell you where it is used but when we come across there in the essay you'll be able to understand it in a better way anarchy anarchy you uh, already know like when you hear that word only you get a feel that it is something related to kings or something like that so this anarchy is actually a state of disorder means there is no uh, proper controlling system maybe it can be the absence of a government or maybe there it it can be an absence of the king or any ruling authority so anarchy is that so if there is no king if there is no proper rule how do you feel so you can see uh, sri lanka is actually facing such an anarchy isn't it so there is nothing proper over there everybody is into their own world they can do whatever they want isn't it so that way it is happening so that is called as anarchy sri lanka may not be the best example but it can be an example for this anarchy then we have the next word that is curtail curtail is to reduce in quantity means to refrain from doing that uh, curtailing means you reduce doing it fine so to reduce in quantity that is the actual mean then tyranny tyranny is uh, more or less similar to anarchy but here it also means cruel 
fine so what sri lanka is experiencing is actually tyranny so that cruelty or unreasonable there is no proper reason for whatever people are doing so whatever uh, somebody is doing there is no proper reason for that you feel oh this is so stupid this shouldn't have been done done or something like that so that way you start feeling that is called as tyranny then insolence insolence is the rude and disrespectful behavior somebody is insolent means that person is not respecting you that that person is not courteous enough to talk to you or to behave with you so that is called as insolence fine so some may you cannot call children as insolence but you can call elders who are not behaving properly as insolence fine insolence insolent ts you have to use so that they are we are talking about the people who are expressing this insolence fine then we have male storm you pronounce it as male storm so this is a situation or maybe a state of confused movement something which is haphazard the movement which is haphazard so that is called as male storm uh, you uh, can experience this male storm when uh, all of a sudden the traffic light goes off you're going you're waiting for the traffic uh, signal to be clear and that time uh, all of a sudden the traffic light goes off and then everybody starts coming from all the sides so when the traffic light is off you also start going from this side people start coming from the other side from the left side maybe all four sides if at all there are four roads so that movement that haphazard movement is called as maelstrom that was just an example it need not have to be with traffic only it can be with other movements also maybe with animals maybe with the, the crowd or anything like that in this essay we talk about this maelstrom that is the movement of traffic so i gave you that example here next is trombone trombone is actually a large white brass instrument so you have this instrument like this okay so you you blow it and you have it like this and you have some instrument like this so to hold and blow right so this is called as trombone so trombone is a large um, a brass instrument which makes lot of sound okay something like a trumpet fine trumpet you just hold it and uh, blow it but uh, trombone is something different there is a picture in the next slide i'll show you that so here at last we have this banality what is banality something that lacks originality or freshness something that is not authentic something that is not original so that is called as banal or banality something that lacks originality is called as banality fine so uh, it is not authentic you can say fine so these are the new words that are there in this essay so go through this new words before you start reading that essay so that you can understand the uh, essay better yes there are many uh, more uh, new words also maybe you don't use it uh, frequently so maybe you will find it little difficult and when you come across such words please make a note of it we will discuss about that in the class so coming to the theme of it so this is an amusing essay so as i told you gardiner's essays have this uh, touch of humor in them fine so similarly this is called as an amusing essay it is an amusing essay because as you read it you feel oh this is so commonly done in our uh, area also oh this even i have experienced yes this is not correct what she is doing this is not right what he is doing so something something like this you start you uh, though it is not very very interesting you feel like reading it some essays are like that isn't some essays or some books are like that you don't want to read that but as you start reading they'll just make you read you can just go through the whole essay very quickly yes this essay is it it can come up to maybe 3 pages not even 3 pages you can read it within 10 minutes so it is such an amusing essay amusing because you feel that humor also you get a smile on your face when you read this essay that's why it is called as amusing as i said it's a very uh, for me it was very interesting for you it may be even more amusing so author declares that in order to preserve everyone's freedom it is necessary to curtail everyone's freedom see what the irony is in order to preserve everyone's freedom we need to curtail everyone's freedom so this is a very uh, ironical situation very sarcastic you can say okay so this uh, in this essay the author talks about the freedom of people uh, that is freedom of movement it can be or freedom of uh, uh, acting for anything for that matter so he talks about freedom so in order to preserve in order to protect my freedom others freedom has to be curtailed so let us see what and all are the examples he gives and what and all he talks about in this essay so to he points out what constitutes to 
true liberty. So here freedom, liberty, all these are the terms that are used by the author, fine. So he talks about true liberty. He tells what is actual freedom, what is that freedom, he, he redefines freedom you can say. Fine. So, what is it that uh, causes this true liberty is the message given by the author. So, this you can consider as the message that is given by the author to the readers. Fine. How do you protect one's freedom is the actual uh, question that he has answered over here. So, let us get into the summary of it. This starts in a very amusing way as I said before. The essay starts with an anecdote of a fat old lady walking down the street in Petrograd. So, Petrograd is actually a city in Russia. Fine, it is a city in Russia. Russia, you know, right? It was USSR before, now it is Russia. Russia is very famous now because it is, it has the trending news, it is in trending news, that is the war. Fine. So, he, the author talks about a lady who is walking in Petrograd. Petrograd is supposed to be one of the places which has the thickest uh, traffic. Fine. There is too much of traffic there. Uh, why is the traffic is that? That uh, people gather over there. Whenever there is a, there will be a strike or anything in Russia, people gather over there for protesting or maybe something new is being declared. So, there people gather in order to declare that. So, any important news to be declared, it comes to Petrograd. Fine. So, this way it is actually a very prominent circle in our cities and all you call it as circle and squares, right? So, like that you call this as a very important hub wherein important things are discussed or protested or declared or anything like that. So, this is Petrograd. So, then the essay starts with this that is the anecdote of a fat old lady walking down the street. So, what happens is she is walking in the middle of the road. Fine. That is people are moving around, vehicles are moving around, she is walking in the middle of the road. So, the policeman stops her and asks her, what are you doing? Why are you walking like this? So, she says, I am free to do whatever I want. So, I have that freedom and so I am walking like this. That means she is worried only about her freedom. But the policeman, he tells, this is not the way to do it come to one side. This is the place where vehicles are moving and he calls her aside. So, why does the author take this anecdote? Why does the author give this as an example here? Because he is talking about the freedom of people. Okay. So, here if at all uh, the policeman allows that lady to walk along, that means the other people who are moving around, their freedom will be curtailed. Fine. They have to be stopped from being free in order to allow one person to be free. Suppose everybody else has to be free then this lady has to be called aside means her freedom has to be curtailed. So, this way the author starts giving the message from right from the first sentence of the uh, essay here. So, here you can see uh, either the lady has to be let free curtailing the freedom of the vehicles or for people who are using the vehicles their freedom have to be their freedom has to be allowed and this lady's freedom has to be Curtail. So, this is what is the irony that the author is using over here. So, this essay starts with that and he clarifies that the boundaries of personal liberty is very important. So, what is the boundary of a personal liberty? That means everybody is free to do anything but it is only the personal liberty. Now, who is going to ask you if you just leave your hair open and you walk on the street? Who is going to ask you even if it is hot and you are wearing a jacket which protects you from rain or maybe uh, sun, uh, maybe uh, the cold or anything like that. So, nobody is going to ask you is it I am free to wear anything isn't it. So, if at all I wear a sari and walk in foreign countries that is fine right. Nobody is going to ask me but you are not supposed to curtail others freedom. That means the author is talking about personal liberty and he is talking about freedom. That is he is differentiating what is liberty, what is personal liberty and what is freedom. So, he clarifies the boundaries of this personal freedom there. Sorry, that is personal liberty. He also tells that the struggle for freedom begins when children are very young. Yes, when they are small only the struggle for freedom freedom begins. You also might have experienced, isn't it? When you were small children, you might be fighting for something, isn't it? Maybe you want to go to some classes or anything or you don't want to go to some classes or anything. Fine. So, that time you fight for it. You cry for it. Maybe when it is a small child only, the child wants to go out of the house but the parents don't allow thinking about the safety of the child. 
isn't it? That means the child is not allowed to be free. That is under the control of the parents. But what does the child do? It starts crying. Or maybe the child wants to eat something that has fallen down on the uh, floor. But the parents al do not allow that in order to look at the safety of the child or the health of the child in order to protect the health of the child. So again, the child is not free to do what it wants. Isn't it? So that is what the author is telling over here. Fine. The examples what I gave may not be given by the author. It is in a different uh, way he has spoken. I just told this in order to make it clear to you. So it starts from a very young age. That was during childhood when you are not when you were not able to walk on your own. But the author is also talking about the adolescence. Fine. You become a teenager, then also you will have to fight. You come to uh, the, you reach your adolescence, then also you have to fight. So in different stages, the fight is actually different. When you are a toddler, you fight for different things. But when you are at your adolescence, you fight for something different. Isn't it? So the way in which you fight is different. The level at which you fight is different. But there is a struggle uh, for anybody each and every day. And that struggle will be freedom only for freedom so that you are struggling in order to make yourself free or maybe keep yourself free. You are fighting for your freedom. So that is what the author talks over here. So according to Gardiner, sacrifice seems to be the foundation of liberty. So this in order to have this liberty, there should be sacrifice as the foundation of that. Now, let me give you an example. If at all, you're talking about a family life. Fine. So many of them might have sacrificed, isn't it? Take your family only for example. Your parents and you are there. To uh, Let us limit our circle uh, to a very uh, smaller one. So your parents might be uh, struggling very hard in order to bring you up. So what and all are the sacrifices they might have done in order to provide you a very good life? Isn't it? In order to provide a very financially stable life for you, that is in order to protect your freedom, that is you have to, uh, maybe you have your own expenses, then you have to take your own course, something like that. You have your own choices. In order to make those choices come true, those dreams come true, your parents might have sacrificed so many things. Isn't it? Your parents might have sacrificed their sleep. Your parents might have sacrificed their time for, for that is very much important. Isn't it? They might have sacrificed so many things. Maybe they have come from a village and they have settled down in city, leaving all their family behind, maybe uh, leaving uh, their parents. Isn't it? So they might have sacrificed their family also. Fine. If at all, girl is getting married and coming to another house, then also she does a lot of sacrifices. So there are various uh, levels at which uh, people have to sacrifice. And in order to have your own liberty, People have to sacrifice. Now, let me just give you a simpler example. Suppose I want to be financially stable. So what do I do? I have to sacrifice so many things. I have to sacrifice my family life in order to earn more money. Isn't it? I cannot be sitting at home and at the same time, I cannot be earning more money. Yes, of course, people do that by uh, doing some business or anything. But at the same time, whatever you do for your liberty, you need to give some time and that time will be taken away from somewhere. So you have to dedicate your time over here. If at all you're dedicating your time over here, that means you're taking that time from somewhere else. So that is what the author is talking about. So the author says that in order to have this personal liberty, one or the other way, some or the other sacrifice has to be done. So the sacrifice is the foundation of liberty is what he says. Then he gives an example of traffic police in a busy junction. So a traffic police there in a very busy junction at some place. And suppose he doesn't order, he doesn't stop people from moving around. That is, he cannot just allow everybody to move however he wants. Isn't it? Maybe he has to stop few people from moving and he has to allow from one side. Isn't it? Suppose the traffic lights are not working. You can see policemen standing there and they are stopping people from one side. Okay, so they give signal to stop and the other side starts moving. So this such an example is given by the author there. So one person's freedom has to be curtailed in order to uh, protect the other person's freedom. So here also he brings in freedom. 
okay so yes you may feel that it is very absurd it's very weird that the author is talking about this traffic movement he's talking about one person being stopped the other person uh, moving and at the same time the other person will be stopped and uh, in order to make this person move yes it might sound absurd for you but you just see the logic that the author has used in order to make the concept clear to you so there are few more examples such examples given by the author and that is what makes this essay very interesting fine so coming to the next part of it yes as i told you i told you that uh, there is trombone so this is called as trombone this is an instrument that can be played it's a brass instrument which gives out loud sound fine it gives out loud sound you might have seen this in uh, musical bands or in churches fine in musical bands or churches you can see this trombone okay let us come back to essay author tells that freedom is a social contract and not personal so here you can see wherever he is talking about freedom freedom is concerned to others also fine when it comes to our freedom it is um, influenced by other people's freedom also but when it comes to liberty it is concerned only with us so freedom is concerned with the other people's freedom also my freedom is concerned with other people's freedom also whereas my personal liberty is concerned only to me so this is the difference the author makes it clear here so he says that uh, freedom is actually a social contract and not personal i am not the only person who can simply move around freely isn't it if at all i am moving around freely that means i am uh, i have that liberty to move around freely but if at all i have freedom i should be very conscious about the rules and regulations that are going around so i should be socially very concerned before i start moving around in my own way fine i should be very conscious about what other people are doing so that is something related to society so i should be worried about the society i cannot just go and steal from somewhere and i cannot uh, live, uh, live like that isn't it because that is you don't call that as freedom you call it as a crime stealing is a crime because that is concerned with the society for me it may be freedom that is i can go to anybody's house and i can take it off but that may be freedom according to me but that is a crime according to the society yes freedom is concerned with the social contract it is not personal actually fine so the author also giving gives an example of playing a trombone just imagine early morning 4 o'clock 4:30 you get up and start blowing this trombone how will, what will people do one or two days they will tolerate next day they'll come they'll knock the door maybe you're playing inside your room or maybe on your terrace they'll come knock the door and slap one or two to you isn't it but at the same time you go to himalayas you sit on the top of the mountain and play there who is going to ask you nobody right that means you should be very conscious about the society so this example of playing a trombone makes this essay very amusing you read the way the author has written that you start you get a smile on your face you start uh, feeling like laughing fine so this playing of trombone is a very good example you cannot be doing whatever you want amidst the people where you live that means amidst the society but you can do it alone when you go to himalayas there is nobody to ask you you can do whatever you want there that doesn't mean that you can blow it in front of people it can disturb others no it should not curtail others freedom also when you blow a trombone on your terrace or at your house what happens people who are sleeping they are disturbed their freedom of sleep is disturbed that is the reason they come and curtail your freedom of playing the trombone so this is a very good example given by the author you must read and enjoy this example that is given by the author so we shall do that in the class then gardiner also says that unfortunately we are quick in identifying the fault of others than our own yes this is very much true isn't it identifying others faults gives us lot of a kind of um, enthusiasm in us it it actually inspires us in order to find more and more faults of others isn't it it gives such a thrill identifying others mistakes has been always a thrill in everybody's life so that we are very quick at identifying others faults but identifying our mistakes it is very difficult it means we are not ready for change we are not ready to accept things when it comes to us so suppose you are identifying somebody else's mistake and the same mistake you are doing somebody else identifies it of course you are gone that means you are not ready to accept it you start arguing so that is what the author 
talks about over here. So identifying others faults, it should be possible for us to accept it the same way when it comes back to us. Fine. So this we can talk about karma. Whenever you give something to others, it comes back to you 100 times more. Okay, so here the author gives an example of uh, the people identifying others mistake more than identifying our mistakes here. Fine, he talks about that also. Then finally, he concludes there are many more examples that are there. So the, the important points I have just touched upon when we discuss in the class, you will get to know. Yes, these are the important points to be considered when we are writing the answers. Then finally, he concludes that small matters decide whether we are civilized or uncivilized. This is very much true, isn't it? This point is 100% true. How is that? Small things only, you just feel whether they are important or not, whether they are, whether they show that whether we are civilized or not. Suppose you go to a hotel, you, uh, eating may be a very small thing for you, isn't it? Eating may be very small thing for you, but the way you eat shows that you are civilized or not. Or maybe you are walking in a road, the way you behave with beggars, suppose somebody comes and begs you, if you want to give, you may give. If not, it's okay, fine. But the way you behave with the beggar, that also shows you are civilized or not. These were the two uh, just simple examples that I gave you. But the author has done it in a wonderful way when he comes to talking about this uh, civilized and uncivilized way of behavior. Fine. Yes, I would uh, request you to go through the essay so that you will understand all the minute details. It's a really wonderful essay. It's a general topic so you can understand it easily and you can write it. You can fetch good marks also. Fine. It's a very interesting essay. I would want you to go through the essay also, read all the new words also. Any doubt you come across, please make a note of it. We shall be discussing in the physical class. Fine. So I want you to read this amusing essay and you uh, come back to the class prepared. Okay. So this will be a wonderful class when you come prepared. So please read the essay. It comes up to two to three pages or at the max maybe three and a half pages. That's it. Fine. Just go through the essay and come prepared to the class and please make sure you watch the video so that you can concentrate on the important points and you can understand it better. Fine. So let us wind up the session. Let us meet again in another more interesting topic. So keep learning. Thank you for your time. See you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.